into making some more mature, organized music for the last albums? Um, we just keep writing records and eventually you get to a point to where you're at and that what you write at the time is where you're mentally at. So if it was more mature than cool because, you know, we just wanted to write a Cephalic Carnage record, you know, with Nick on bass and showcase what we're about. And uh, I, don't know, I think we achieved that. What about you? Yeah, I think I think it comes just naturally, just as musicians, you know what I mean? You just naturally, just as you mature as a, per uh, as a person, you know, or like a writer that writes books would mature and, you know, get to, to, to more, you know, advanced concepts or whatever. I think it's the same with music, you know, and you have to evolve and you have to grow for it to be fun for not not just for the fans or fans of the band or whatever, but for yourselves as musicians. And so I think it's just really important to do that. And uh, I th we didn't like start out with that at all. There wasn't like a conscious effort to be like, well, let's write something more mature. You know what I mean? It's just like we just, you know, we just started writing songs. Zach came down with like four or five songs. And, uh, you know, I, I had a couple songs, Len had a couple songs, and, like, they were all songs we had all just kind of wrote at home, and then we'd come down and mess around with them as a band and stuff, and so it, it kind of just happened. It kind of just came together. Like, we didn't really plan how we were going to do any of it or anything. It was really kind of spontaneous in the writing, and um, I guess the end product ended up just, you know, maybe subconsciously it just slowly happens. You slowly start to kind of organize things a little differently and maybe a little bit I think just like, to me it just was like cutting fat, you know what I mean? It's just like getting getting a leaner, like tastier piece of meat, you know what I mean? But you know, we, there's still, I mean if you listen to all the records for, starting from conforming on, there's still elements of all of it, you know what I mean? So I think it's just a kind of like a ne next logical step kind of a thing, you know? <laughs> smoke grass, drink beer, have a good time, you know? That's all, that's what they're there for. But everybody has their idea on certain kinds of noise. And, you know, that's always been one of our styles is to have a little bit of ambience, you know, and some soundscapes. There's other, other frequencies, you know, other, other things that are, I mean, it, you go into a studio to, to go into a studio and all the benefits of that, you know I mean? You know, I like, I don't think it's, I'm not, I've never been one of those guys that's like, you know, when we go into the studio, I want to write a record that sounds exactly the exact same way we do live. So that way, when you see us live, you know, it'll be the exact same. There's no difference between the two. Because then why are you in a studio? Why not just get a really good live recording? You know, like, I think part of the going into a studio is that you can use the advantages of the technology to make, you know, crazier sounding, you know, products and stuff. So all that stuff, usually all that stuff comes out <coughs> at the very end. After we have all the songs and we're picking what order to put them in, then you'll hear stuff. Just you'll, you'll be walking around the street one day and be like, ah, oh, shit, that would sound killer going in between this song and this song, or it would connect this song to this song. So it kind of makes a record more, uh, con uh, adds to the continuity of it. You know, like it flows better if you have things in between that'll kind of tie it all together. Tie it all know? together, yeah, exactly. <laughs> having a lot of fun because it's hard to find weed here in Holland. Yeah, I mean, they say they have coffee shops and weed's legal here, but we have not found anything yet. We don't, it's just bum <laughs> breaking our hearts. We're really upset. So we don't care for the politicians, we're about the people. And this one is about the people uprising no matter what. It is the endless cycle of violence! I love, we love coming over here. It's 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 a blast. It's a, one of my favorite times of the year, you know, just to explore all the stuff. We've seen so much cool sh cool stuff, you know, that it makes it like kind of surreal for the shows and everything. But the main difference is that um, Europeans are are much more critical, and um, they're much more. 
I would even go so far as to say, I wouldn't say judgmental, but I would say honest, like brutally honest, you know? Um, whereas in the States, like you'll get people are just kind of, you know, they're, we work way too much in the, the United States, I think, and people are just so happy to be at a show. It doesn't matter, you know, even if the sound sucks or even if the band kind of fudged apart or whatever, like in America, like people, for the most part, will still come up afterwards and be like, you know, that was awesome, man. That was one of the best shows ever, blah, blah, blah. Um, just because they're, you know, for the whole aspect of it, they do love it, you know. But in Europe, like, you know, people, if you could have a good show, but if the sound is bad, you know, if, if, if the sound, you know, for whatever reason, the room, you know, had, didn't have a good system or whatever, people will be like, yeah, the show is okay. And you'll be like, oh, I'm not really? liking so much. Yeah, they'll just be like, ah, oh, you know. It w I, w I would have had a really great time, but uh, the sound was just terrible. So, you know, I'm, I'm really bummed out. I spent 30 euros to come here. Killer scene over here. It's amazing. I mean, we, all the festivals. It's just it's three days. I mean, it's just killer. It was just. Yeah. I wish the states were more like Europe in, that, in those aspects. We want to be as extreme as anybody else on on the international level. You know, I mean, we put a lot into our live show, so we feel it's got to be conveyed from your CDs to live. You have to see us to understand what we're about. And you know, our motto is. You can't motivate an audience unless you're not motivated yourself. So we have to give, you know, 150, 250 percent every night, get the crowd into us. You know, I mean, it's it's not really easy music to get into. So at the end of the night, when the, the fists are in the air and the people are asking us to play more, I felt we.